Over the past year, I've been really invested in creating plushies and learning how to sew and missing steps along the way. But one thing I definitely wanted to stop doing was making these giant paper sculptures, also known as big headaches. These giant paper sculptures are essentially like big 3D stencils for sewing projects. I go over this a lot in my previous video, but you're not really gonna need to know anything more than that. But despite the mess they make, why are they such a headache? For one thing, they fall apart and you can't resize them. And if you lose a piece, uh, you can't reprint it. You you just lost it and, th and then you can't do anything about it. So that sucks. But uh, I'm running out of trash cans. So, um, I don't want to do this anymore. All right, it's out with the old and in with the new. We're going digital. We're getting rid of that paper trash and going to what God intended, Blender, that was sent down from the heavens into a free format that anybody on God's given earth can have and have a great time and also a load of questions that arise because you've never used a blender before. So yeah, I never used blender before, but I uh, was pretty confident that I'd be able to use this program to make 3D models that I would be able to transfer into 3D stuffed animals. So working digitally first and then physically last. So let's put on our study glasses and get down to business. So it turns out that this is not as intuitive as I had anticipated. I did find one thing which led me on the right track, which was learning how to unwrap objects. I could add seams. Now essentially, this unwrapping process allows me to add seams along uh, my three-dimensional object relative to where they would be in real life. And this was a awesome moment uh, of realization. And then it shows me this great image of what all these pieces look like when they are unwrapped or into sort of segments. You know what the biggest problem with this is? I have no idea where these pieces go or what they are. So that's where the headache started. I started going through multiple YouTube videos trying to figure out how to do this and none of them really brought up the main thing which was how do I put together this big puzzle? How do I know what color fabric to use for which spot? How do I know what pieces what? This is not it. I gotta do something else. And do something else? I did. I ended up stumbling upon... Thank God <laughs> I found this. Because I ended up stumbling upon this uh, website called Plushify, which essentially does exactly what I want it to and exactly what I need it to. So Plushify essentially is this free to use program and it has everything labeled out for you. So like it has a whole user's guide. If you have any questions, it's gonna tell you like, okay, how should you format your model? Um, what are the do's and don'ts essentially? And like, how should I make my seams so that they actually translate well to a physical like sewn object? It'll kind of give you guys a rough rundown of all of those questions. So I'm not gonna go over to the hyper specifics. I'm just gonna kind of show you guys the features that this program offers, which are really cool. It just does a great job of organizing all your pattern pieces and like you're able to label them, tell what color they are. Essentially, it's crazy. I'm going to get into this because this is really cool. So I'm just going to go over the things I find most exciting about this program um, and the things I think that are most useful. Uh, with this specific program. So we have overview, which will just give you an overview of your end product, what everything kind of will look like at the end. So there's a thing called seams, which is a new thing that they just added. Essentially, if you have anything that you want to edit after you've already uploaded your file, so you want to add another seam or take a seam away, you can do that in here. Of course, I'd always recommend doing all your seaming in your modeling software first, just in case if something happens, you wouldn't want to lose that progress. I think by far the coolest tab in this program is going to be the pattern tab, because essentially you can label each individual piece. So you can get each piece a name and you can also tell it like what direction you want your fabric to go. It's as easy as literally clicking and dragging your mouse across the screen and it'll take your first point and last point and make that direction arrow. You can also personally label like 
what color you want each piece to be. So that way you know what piece uh, you're tracing this pattern onto. And the label that you give that specific piece will end up showing up on other pattern pieces seams. So wherever there's a seam allowance and where two pieces end up touching, it'll tell you what piece it touches. And it's super helpful. So it's like a puzzle that tells you how to put it together. So yeah, I got pretty hyped about this program. There's a few other things that are pretty cool about this. So essentially like the color tab. So you can change the color of each individual pattern piece. So let's say you have a few different fabrics or some fabrics that you were thinking you might need to get. Um, you can go ahead and test tons of color combinations, make a few different variations or whatever, um, which is really cool. All right, and there's one other thing that I think is still really cool about this, which is cooler than working physically, is that you can resize your object to different things, which is one of the things I was looking for. There's also this really cool AR mode, which allow you to kind of see what it might look like in your house. And you can also adjust the size from there, which is pretty cool. So if you want to make a regular sized plushie or whatever object it is that you're making, you can do that. And then you can also make it massive, super huge. But all jokes aside, like, well, actually I did do that. So it's kind of not really a joke. And that took me another like 45 hours. <laughs> but of course, once you're done, you've figured out what size you want everything to be, you just print it out and it'll give you a selection of different paper sizes. So whatever your printer is, it's got you covered and you can do it. And also tell you like where to cut it out, etc., which is pretty cool. After a few long nights and hours behind the sewing machine, I finally came up with my first plushie uh, using this new process, which I'm really happy with. I mean, this is like the first thing I've made that actually looks kind of cute and not just terrifying and horrendous. I have so much to learn with sewing, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, it ended up turning out pretty good. I'll show some pictures of it that kind of display it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So I'd call this overall creative adventure a win. For one thing, I was able to find a way to create these sort of models without using paper and not having to go through that whole headache. But also I learned how to use Blender because I hadn't known how to do that before. Hope you guys found this video informative and interesting. And I thought, you know, it's about time for me to start documenting my progression through my creative processes and stuff. Cause I figured maybe, you know, someone else might like to see it. And also for me, I can go back and watch and see where I've come. And yeah, I'm gonna keep doing this until I die. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully sometime soon. Bye.